this week in Jamaica now. Wagwan, Jamaica! Barack on the Rock. The American president touches Jamaican soil. Many wanted to see him, but only a few got the chance. What Jamaicans wanted to tell the American president. Maybe we stand a better chance up by the U.S. Embassy. I can get the 10 year or maybe a 20 year. Obama announces 70 million U.S. dollar education program for Latin American and Caribbean youths. And he also weighs in on the Ganja debate. What the Obama visit really means. One commentator makes the call. And bus conductor arrested for the murder of a 14-year-old pregnant girl. The details of these and more coming up after the break. Enter to win great prizes from now until June 26 in the Gleaners Youth Link Scratch and Win promotion. Phone cards, meal vouchers, gift vouchers, movie tickets and tablets. Get your scratch card with every copy of Youth Link purchased and follow the instructions to reveal if you've won a prize. Check the Gleaners Youth Link for more details. The Gleaners Youth Link magazine, it's all about youth. Authorized under Section 58.3 of the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Act. I'm Carlene Brown and this is Jamaica Now. Many Jamaicans were left disappointed last week, having waited in vain along streets and curbs to get a glimpse of United States President Barack Obama. But at the University of the West Indies, hundreds of young leaders got the chance to interact with America's Commander-in-Chief and hear him announce a program to boost education and entrepreneurship in Latin America and the Caribbean. Greetings, Massive! Hey. Wagwan, Jamaica! Yeah, I've been making myself at home here. It is great to be in beautiful Jamaica. Uh, not only because I'm proud to be the first President of the United States to visit in more than 30 years, uh, but because I just like the vibe here. So, today I'm announcing nearly $70 million in U.S. investments in education, training, and employment programs for our young people throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. The U.S. President said this year, 24 entrepreneurs and civil society young leaders from the Caribbean and Latin America will be taken to the U.S. under the program. That number will be increased to 250 young leaders next year. And while the young leaders and before them Jamaica's prime minister and regional heads met with the U.S. president, the crowd swelled along the streets of Kingston as anxious Jamaicans waited to get a glimpse of him. But they would leave disappointed. Much dissatisfaction in regards to the president of Obama in our country. No, we're not demonstrating against Obama. We're not burning the America flag. Okay, we're showing regardability about him. And at the same time, it appears like as if we are ill and now we are subverted and are distant from the President Obama. Them say we're bad, but not everybody bad. We want him come back, come see. Jamaica. And we stay so far, we stay so far from we can't see him. Them should not make us see him, even touch him. We not hurt him. I came out here to see the President Obama, but unfortunately we can't get to see who can see the vehicle that he's coming in. We're so anticipating the arrival. Yeah, we'd love to get a, um, even with Eros Park with Mr. Bama, big him up straight and the Prime Minister. I'm just, you know, going on a wild goose chase, but better than nothing. And the matter of the legalization of ganja was among the issues put to the American president as he met with youth leaders at the UWI. How, uh, how U.S. is visioning, how, how would you see Jamaica pushing forward on a decriminalization, legalization emphasis on the hemp industry. Give okay. thanks. Uh, I know on paper, a lot of folks think, you know what, if we just legalize marijuana, then it'll reduce the money flowing into the transnational drug trade. There are more revenues and jobs created. Uh, I have to tell you that it's not a silver bullet. Uh, because, first of all, if you are legalizing marijuana, then how do you deal with other drugs? And where do you draw the line? 
and, and if we combine a public health perspective, a focus on not simply throwing every low-level person with possession into prison, but trying to get them treatment, we combine that with economic development and alternative opportunities for youth, uh, then I think we can strike the right balance. And the U.S. President last week held discussions with the Jamaican Prime Minister in bilateral talks before meeting with CARICOM leaders. The issues of crime, security and energy were on top of the agenda. Earlier, the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Energy signed an energy agreement with Jamaica's Energy Minister Philip Paulwell. Paulwell said the government is optimistic, particularly at the prospect of becoming a hub for the distribution of LNG from the U.S. to the rest of the region. And now that the president's visit is over, what's next? Social commentator Peter S. Butte says since Obama cannot be re-elected for a third term, he can now concentrate on foreign policy matters like readmitting Cuba into the mainstream of hemispheric affairs and re-establishing a stronger U.S. presence in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Espute says it will be relatively easy to wean us away from our dependency on Venezuelan oil now supplied to the Caribbean on preferential terms. But he says it will be harder to dislodge China as the major funder of infrastructure projects in the Caribbean. The matter of Jamaica's relationship with China was among the issues put to the president at the UWI Young Leaders meeting on Thursday. If China is making investments that are building up infrastructure or improving education or helping the people, then we welcome that. We think that's great. The only thing is you got to make sure you look at what strings may be attached. For one, China has developed a reputation for less than straightforward business practices. For example, in 2009, the World Bank debarred China communications construction company CCCC Limited and all its subsidiaries from World Bank funding because of fraudulent practices under Phase 1 of the Philippines National Roads Improvement and Management Project. CCCC is the parent company of China Harbor Engineering Company, CHEC, which operates in Jamaica. In other news, the police have now charged the bus conductor who was implicated in the murder of 14-year-old K. Alicia Simpson. 29-year-old Damien Ewan was charged with murder by the St. Thomas Police on Wednesday. He is to appear in the Yalas Resident Magistrates Court on April 15. The police say he has also been charged with sexual offenses in relation to the case. On Tuesday, March 3, relatives found the body of the schoolgirl and summoned the police. It had multiple chop wounds to the head and neck. The police say a post-mortem examination revealed that Kay Alicia was pregnant. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Carlene Brown and as we go, recapping the visit of Barack on the Rock.